What if I told you that the secrets of Area 51 are not just a figment of Hollywood's wild imagination, but a reality that surpasses our wildest dreams? For decades, the enigma that is Area 51 has gripped the global consciousness, its enduring mystery provoking countless theories and debates. But what if the unbelievable were true? As we venture into the heart of this riddle, we'll hear from Bob Lazar, the man who dares to expose the unimaginable. Stay with us as we dive into the mind of the man who claims to have seen it all, Bob Lazar. Allow me to introduce you to Bob Lazar, a man whose claims have rattled the very foundations of our understanding of the universe. Bob Lazar, a name that has become synonymous with the enigma of Area 51. He is a physicist, a businessman, and most intriguingly, a whistleblower. Bob's journey began in the late 1980s, when he claimed to be an employee at a site near Area 51, known as S-4. This site, according to Lazar, was where the United States government was reverse engineering alien technology. His claims, as you can imagine, sparked a wildfire of controversy. Skeptics questioned his credibility, pointing to a lack of evidence for his academic and professional credentials. Meanwhile, believers clung to his detailed descriptions of alien spacecraft and the potential implications for humanity. This controversy, this tug of war between belief and skepticism, has made Bob Lazar a figure of fascination. But what does Lazar himself have to say about all this? So, without further ado, let's hear it from the man himself, Scene Script. Bob, you've claimed to have worked on extraterrestrial technology at Area 51. Can you tell us more about this? Bob Lazar, a name synonymous with the mysteries of Area 51, remains a controversial figure. According to him, his time at the secretive base was spent working on something that, if true, could rewrite the annals of science. He claims he was part of a covert operation to reverse engineer alien technology. Yes, you heard it right, alien technology. Lazar alleges that he saw nine different spacecraft during his tenure at Area 51, all of which, he insists, were of extraterrestrial origin. He describes these craft as being powered by a mysterious substance, which he refers to as Element 115. According to Lazar, this element defies our understanding of physics, generating a gravitational field strong enough to distort space-time itself. But it doesn't stop there. Element 115, he says, was the key to the propulsion of these crafts, enabling them to traverse the vast reaches of space at speeds unthinkable by current human technology. These spacecraft, Lazar recounts, were unlike anything he'd seen before. Their design, he asserts, was so advanced it seemed almost magical. They were devoid of any traditional propulsion system, no signs of combustion engines, no thrusters, no visible means of lift. Instead, they were smooth and seamless, their mechanisms hidden within their sleek, otherworldly bodies. Lazar's claims extend to the operation of these crafts. He tells of systems that responded to the touch and intent of the pilot, interfaces that were somehow symbiotic, creating a bond between the craft and its operator. It's a picture that seems ripped straight from the pages of a science fiction novel, yet Lazar maintains it as his reality. And what of element 115? This supposed wonder substance, this key to interstellar travel, remains elusive. Lazar claims it is stable, abundant in the universe, but here on Earth, it is yet to be found in a form that supports his assertions. These are certainly extraordinary claims, Bob. But why should we believe you? Bob Lazar's revelations have divided the world into believers and skeptics. But what does Bob himself think about this? As his story reverberated across the globe, it was met with a mixed bag of responses. The scientific community, steeped in empirical evidence and rigid methodology, raised a collective eyebrow. They argued that Bob's claims, though fascinating, lacked the concrete proof required to shatter our understanding of physics. They demanded more than just a narrative. They needed tangible, reproducible evidence. On the other hand, we have the UFO enthusiasts. These ardent believers, long yearning for indisputable proof of extraterrestrial life, welcomed Bob's story with open arms. To them, Bob was the whistleblower they had been waiting for, the one who could finally validate their beliefs. But amidst this maelstrom of opinions, where does Bob himself stand? When asked to respond to his critics, Bob maintains a steadfast belief in his experience. He asserts that he merely shared what he'd seen, what he'd worked on. He acknowledges the skepticism, 
but it doesn't shake his conviction. Bob's tale has become a fascinating study in belief, skepticism, and the power of a story. It's a narrative that challenges us, that asks us to question what we know, what we believe, and what we're willing to accept. Whatever the truth may be, Bob Lazar's story has forever changed the way we look at the stars and our place in the universe. As we wrap up, remember that the universe is a vast unexplored frontier filled with mysteries waiting to be uncovered. Bob Lazar's claims of extraterrestrial technology, of advanced propulsion systems, suggest a cosmos far more intricate than we could ever imagine. The Area 51 Enigma serves as a reminder to keep an open mind, to question, to explore. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and remember, the truth is out there.